Hey everyone, in today's video tutorial we're going to be talking about curves. And no, I don't mean your girlfriend's sister's curves that you keep admiring. We're talking about tone curves. Yes, that's right, tone curves. That one app in Lightroom or Photoshop you keep avoiding because you really don't understand how it works. Now I know you're saying, hey Joe, I don't use Lightroom or Photoshop. How can this possibly help me? Well, the great thing is about tone curves, it doesn't matter if you're using applications like GIMP, you know, Roar HDR, Luminaire, or even video applications like Premiere Pro, tone curves work virtually the same on any program. So grab yourself a cup of coffee and sit right down as I explain to you the secrets to getting amazing photos. Okay everyone, here we are in Lightroom. Now like I mentioned at the start of the video, it really doesn't matter what program you're using. Tone curves pretty much across the board are the same in most any application. The only real difference is the way they might be laid out. For example, as we see here on the tone curve, it's listed as RGB. Well, another program that might be listed as luminance, which it is, it affects the luminance of your image, which yeah, effectively is your RBG, RGB channel, which is everything. But it doesn't matter, like I said, what program you're using or what video editor you use. Tone curves, for the most part, are pretty much identical on any application. So this doesn't really uh, you know, pertain just to Lightroom. It pertains to anything in photography in general. Now, let's go over here and start looking at the tone curve. First, I got a little photo I took in Seoul, South Korea. And I'm actually just going to play around the tone curve and show you what happens when I actually adjust a few things and kind of give you a more idea of how to adjust the image and stuff in your photo. Now, first down here at the corner, we have all where all the blacks lie, where the black data is. Over here at the top, we have all the white data and stuff. Now, when you see I pull this up, watch what happens to the histogram up here. A lot of the blacks are getting pulled up and brightened up. Now, when I pull the black slider this direction, as you can see, a lot of data it seems to be lost, but we're keeping the full, you know, dynamic range of the tone curve here. See, I pull it up. You get brighter information in the darks or the shadows. And now we're crushing that data. We're actually losing data, getting rid of it. Okay. And the same can be done on the lights here. You brighten it up, lose the data. Okay, so pretty much simple, easy to understand, right? Now, one thing a lot of people like, especially these days, is like a matte look in their photos. We can just simply pull that up. You get you crushing a little bit of data and also brightening it up at the same time. So you lose a little bit, bring it up. You know, also, matte look, a lot of people like it, some don't. But also, in case you're doing any kind of video and you happen to have a little shadow uh, noise in the shadows, that's a great way to hide that sh uh, noise. Now, what happens if we grab the center of the, uh, you know, the tone curve here and we pull it up? Well, everything in the mid-tones gets brightened up. If we pull it down, everything in the mid-tones gets lost. Not lost, but darkened, excuse me. Let's see if we can pull that down. But at the same time, you see the brights and the darks remain the same. So we're just affecting the mid-tones here. Okay, let's delete that. Easy to understand, right? Okay, let's do a little bit with this photo here. This is a really nice photo, so let me just brighten this up in the center here. Kind of bring out a lot of the luminous stuff around the lights, making it really stand out. And it kind of brings up a little bit of the shadows and stuff. Now let's go over here to another channel. Let's do reds. Now, I like the lights and stuff in the night sky to be kind of golden looking, but I like the shadows and stuff to be uh, dark blue. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a little S curve. So I'm going to pull up the uh, reds here just a little bit. And I'm going to pull down the reds just a little bit right here. That way it kind of removes the reds from the uh, shadows. Now I'm going to grab the green here. Now you're probably thinking, Joe, come on now, red and green doesn't make yellow. Well, if you're mixing uh, pigments and stuff in paint, yeah, it's going to give you a crappy brown looking color. But um, when you're working with computers and luminance and stuff and light, it actually equals yellow. 
just trust me on this one. So I am going to create a little cur uh, S curve here for the lights and kind of bring it down. And you can see it kind of brightens up, giving us warm tone to all the lights and stuff. You'll see kind of before and after. It warmed them up just a little bit. And of course, you can bring it down some more if you want. Let's go back to the red and adjust that just a little bit. And as you see, we pull down the red, it starts getting more green looking. Now, you're probably thinking it looks kind of funny. It does. Let's go down here. Now, let's remove the blue from it. And we start pulling the blue out, those lights get much warmer. But we won't keep blue and stuff in those shadows, so let's kind of just pull the blue up. Don't want to give it too much. About right there. Okay, we can adjust it here. And let's just kind of fine tune it here. Yeah, I think that gives us a very cinematic look. Okay, let's go back to the RGB, and if we want to actually clip the back end just a little bit, give it more of a cinematic look. Let's clip a little bit of that data on the end. Oh, voila. Simple tone curve, good, nice cinematic look. Very simple. It's pretty much the easiest way to do it. Okay, now get that one done for an example. Let's hop over here to another uh, photo I got. Now here's another photo I recently took in uh, Seoul, uh, South Korea. Yeah, is that one of the palaces? I'm not sure. So I've showed you how to uh, before, you know, work the luminance and stuff. But let me show you how to create contrast. So we are on a luminance layer here, RGB. So if I pull down the darks here, and I pull up the lights here, we can create contrast. Pretty much what you find in one of these uh, pre-made, you know, tone curves here. Okay. But I want to kind of make this look more like an old Kodak photo. So I want to pull this over. Do a little clipping there. And let's pull this down. Just to darken those highlights just a little bit. Clip just a little bit of that out. Now let's go over here to reds. Now the reds I want to bring up in the lower sh uh, shadowed areas. Give things a little warmer feel. I actually want to make sure those reds stay out of my sky. Now my bright bright areas. Okay. And the greens I'm gonna pull up just a little bit too. And the same, I'm gonna pull down that just a little bit. Now let's go over here to the blues. Now the blues I do want in those skies. I want to bring that up. But I want to actually want to make that look a little more washed out in the shadow areas as we can see here pull down just a little bit nice little s curve here now if we go back to our rgb our luminance curve here we can fine tune adjust this and often you can actually add more you know kind of fine tune it let's just put one here in the center to keep everything locked in the center there these can be fun that's <laughs> the best way to put it to work with sometimes sometimes they can be a pain in the rear let's just see if we can't get it looking about right there so we brought, brought out those information stuff let's pull it back yeah about right here and so you know a little after a little before as you can see made the skies a little more bluer and brought out a little more uh, brown colors into the uh, the lower the lower mid tones and stuff, and also down the shadows. Like I said, you can mix these the way you want. If you want a little more green, just bring down those reds a little bit. Just have to watch your photo because you are mixing the colors for this image, and that'll give you a uh, best way to kind of adjust these. Now, a lot of these preset websites really don't want you to know this this is basically all they're doing is making their own little tone curves and stuff and selling you a preset and you're paying a lot of money 
But this is it. This is the 90% of the work getting those nice uh, Instagram look photos and everything into your uh, into your photography and video. It's simple as this. Very easy. So anyway, hope everyone found this tutorial helpful. Hey everyone, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, how about give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up's always highly appreciated. If you didn't like this video, then feel free to give it a thumbs down as well. Now, if you're not subscribed to my channel yet, go ahead and click below to go ahead and subscribe. My name is Joe, and I'll see you in the next video.